Hey everybody, it's Peter, and today we're gonna to take a close look at the Tesla Model Y. We're gonna compare it to the Tesla Model 3, and before you tune out because you think you've heard it all, here's the way things work. I'm at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals here in Fredericton, New Brunswick. They consistently stock Tesla Model Ys, Tesla Model 3s, Tesla Model Xs, and Tesla Model Ss. No Cybertruck yet, but that's kind of common for everybody. So here's the thing. I'm gonna talk about some of the practical things that you'll find living with each of these cars and hopefully cover some things that aren't covered in other videos. But because I have access to these vehicles, I'm hoping that we can kind of build a little community here where if you have questions, you can ask them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them in the comments, but I'll also continue to make videos for you so that you get the answers to your questions because there's no way that you are the only one with that question. And we can hopefully create a little community here of answers for questions for Tesla owners and Tesla vehicles. So very quickly, again, I got to talk about Jim Gilbert's here in Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals here in Fredericton, New Brunswick. They regularly stock these vehicles, and that's a huge advantage because one of the things that comes with buying a Tesla is you're kind of buying online, buying in the cloud. It's very difficult to get a person on the phone. So although there is rumors out there that these cars just don't need any service, that's not fully true either. Uh, there's a service shop here with EV train technicians that can help you take care of things. And of course you have the full benefit of everything Tesla. So when you buy here, you get your full service shop if that's what you want, and you also have the ability to access everything that Tesla offers you. It's kind of the best of both worlds. All right, let's dive into the review. So as I mentioned, this is going to be a practical review, but I have a cheat sheet. Let's talk about a couple specs that you probably already know so we can flesh out the practicalities of that. Cheat sheet is Model Y, Model 3, they share a platform, they share a battery pack, but there are some differences between them. Because of the extra height, probably a little extra weight, I haven't checked the specs. This one has a zero to 60 time of five seconds, zero to 60 miles per hour in five seconds. This one is 4.4 seconds. These are both the long range all wheel drive vehicles. There are various performance models. So again, sharing a platform, that's aerodynamics and weight talking for you. I'm assuming it weighs more. Now, switching from miles per hour to kilometers, we're gonna talk about range. 576 kilometers of rated range, 531 kilometers of rated range. So range matters. And we talk about a practical review. Really what we're talking about is aerodynamics make a huge difference. If you drive these cars slower, you're going to get a little bit more mileage than if you drive them a little faster because when you accelerate and when you pick up speed, the wind resistance actually goes exponentially higher as you get faster. So the difference between 100 and say 140 is significant compared to 80 kilometers. My watch is talking to me. Compared to 80 kilometers to 100, for instance, or, or 60 to 100, that kind of thing. So going a little slower can help. And Tesla is a little optimistic in those range numbers. Most of us drive these cars a little more athletically than you would for normal range numbers. But the other difference with a range number is when you're charging the vehicles. These have the same batteries. So in theory, they're gonna charge at the same rate, but some people measure kilometers of range added per hour. And that's where you may see a difference on these because this one's capable of more range. You may see a few more kilometers per hour added, even though your percentage wise in theory should charge at the same speed if they have the same chargers. Most of your charging an electric vehicle is going to be done at home. That's where most owner owners charge their home. One of the great reasons to buy a Tesla is their supercharging network, which allows you to charge on the road and drive basically like a gasoline vehicle. Even here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, there's a huge bank of charges out right by the Trans-Canada Highway. So uh, you can get anywhere you need to get pretty much in these cars. So that's range. Now we also should talk about potential for seven seats here, only five seats there and also towing capacity. This one doesn't have a hitch that I know of, but on the Model Y, there is a little panel that can pop out of there and you can get a hitch on that. Tows about 3,500 pounds. This one, although it's a shared platform, is not rated to tow here in North America. So if you're going to be towing something down the lake or a jet ski or something like that, which of course we also sell here at Jim Gilbert's, this is the one you're gonna get. If you're not towing anything, then that's it. So again, need more speed, zero to 60 acceleration time, and more range, Model 3 is going to be your option. If you need more towing capacity and potential for more seating capacity, Model Y is your option. Now let's start taking a look inside and taking a look at some of those practical differences. 
The biggest difference you're gonna see between these two vehicles as my teddy bear just slouches because he knows what's in store for him is the trunk space. And it is really impressive on both vehicles, but very different. So of course, power operated tailgate uh, here and you've got the same idea here, comes up. So Model 3, Model Y, I mean, you don't need really uh, the specs to say a whole lot of difference here, but let's take a look because these are some of the best vehicles for overall trunk space. Let's start with the Model 3. First of all, we'll do a little teddy bear test here. Just throw them in at the back seat. The Model 3 is actually fairly deep uh, for a car. It just has a smaller opening simply because it is a sedan and that rear window really does come a long ways back. So if you're regularly loading larger boxes into your vehicle, you're just not gonna fit them in the Model 3. However, if you have a lot of stuff to take, that doesn't mean the Model 3 should be ruled out. There is an immense storage area down here and that is incredibly deep. Well, here's a license plate frame to show you as an example. You know, the entire license plate frame down there, underneath the floor over here, you also have a little bit of space back in the back there. Well, actually no, not in this one here. So we'll show you that. Now, coming over to the Model Y, it just gets kind of ridiculous. So uh, first of all, you've got the 40, 40, 20 split. So 40, 20, 40 split there. Uh, you can put the center seat down if you need to. You've also got the same idea here with the lifting rear floor, and that can be sort of propped up like that to give you a little wall there. And this is immensely deep. Let's get that same license plate frame there and just show you what we've got because it's kind of crazy what Tesla does without any gasoline components there. Same license plate frame, lots and lots of space down there. So really kind of, that's the big thing. I better put this back in the right car. And then of course, you don't just have this space there. There is a little space back here as well. You can throw your laptop, um, you know, certainly more than that. You've got some depth there, running shoes, gym stuff, whatever. Now, one of the big benefits of underfloor storage in a SUV is when you have that smelly gear, let's say your gym gear or whatever, you can put it below the floor to keep that smell out of the cabin because it is open to the cabin. So in a Model 3, your trunk is gonna be essentially separate from the cabin, whereas in a Model Y, you are essentially open to the cabin. So it's something just to keep in mind uh, with that underfloor storage that may have a benefit here for you. Of course, you fold the seats down here, you can fit large boxes in there, and uh, of course, uh, little, uh, just smaller boxes in to the Model 3. All right, let's take a look. Back seat space versus back seat space, front seat space versus front seat space, and a couple of the differences that you're gonna see from the uh, in interior environment. All right, let's start with the Model Y. Of course, this is going to be the larger headroom, we assume, if that's correct. So let's find out what happens. Jumping in here, you can see the seat is set relatively to where I need it. Uh, we can play with that a little bit on both cars, but it's gonna be pretty close to where I need it. Uh, nice, fairly wide opening doors. Let's jump in and see what we find. Jumping in the Model Y, it actually feels very large in here. It's a little bit echoey with this large glass roof. And one thing you're gonna notice on the Model 3 is the Model 3 has a bar across that sort of glass roof that you don't have here in the Model Y. I have very good headroom here. You can see that's uh, pretty good. I'm gonna take down, look at my legs here, and you'll see if I stretch my legs out like I am, I am on the seat, which is nice and uh, comfortable for me. That's what I wanna have. If I put my legs up square, they are off. But I have plenty of leg room to stretch out my legs here. Got a little water drips on me here. I apologize for that. Uh, so lots of space here and uh, quite comfortable as a you know traditional family vehicle. If you're just taking four passengers, because that's let's face it, what most of us do in a five passenger vehicle, uh, they're gonna have plenty of space. The only thing I find it's a little low here is the uh, armrest, but it's not too bad at all. It does have uh, cup holders in there. A couple of little features back here. You do have your little uh, tabs here for your um, you know your dry cleaner or something like that. So they're up there and those are just little lights in there, the little hole that you see. So overall, very comfortable back here, very spacious, very airy. Uh, kind of hard to show you exactly the whole uh, view here, but um, no issues here. Even when I put my head on the headrest, lots of headroom there. Uh, so very good in the Model Y, which is what you would expect. Let's take an immediate look at the Model 3 and see what we've got there. Jumping to the Model 3, right away as you approach it, you do notice the lower roof line. And let's see what that translates into as we open the door here. Taking a look, again, very similar look. Let's jump in and see what we find. All right, on camera, it's going to look very similar, but I will tell you that there's less headroom here. I'm about six feet tall and definitely a little bit less headroom here. The armrest is very similar 
on uh, this car. It's, it looks to be a little bit narrower to me as well, and um, but there are the cup holders in there. Knee room, also a little bit less. Uh, toe room underneath the seat seems to be a little bit less down there. I don't know if you can see my toes down there. I've got you know, right about there, my little running shoes that I'm wearing. Let's see if I can get on camera. That's where I'm hitting there. So uh, work boots are not going to fit underneath there. I don't know that that's a huge problem to a lot of people. The other difference you're going to find as I put this armrest up is you can see here with my legs, they are a little bit more raised up. I don't think this is going to matter for kids. It probably won't matter for most average height people. I'm a little bit, uh, I guess, slightly above average at six feet tall. So my legs are just raised off the seat a little bit. And that's one of the big differences you're going to find is the rear seat positioning here uh, just a little bit less room now you do have like I said that bar in the middle but still a very good view over each way you don't have a bar behind you though and that allows me to again put my head on the headrest without bonking the roof or anything like that but it is a little more tight to the roof in this vehicle than in the other vehicle let's go to the front seat and check out some differences there all right, we're back in the Model Y, and you can see headroom is very good again. I have the seat fairly upright where I like it, where I'm comfortable. Um, everything is basically the same in here. As we take a look in front of me here, you've got the same screen, same steering wheel, same basic look in both these vehicles. Uh, the seats feel the same as well. They're not exceptionally wide seats. They fit me just fine, but um, you know, larger people have to decide if they're super comfortable for them. Uh, you know, Model uh, S and Model X do have a little bit larger seats than these, uh, but certainly not uncomfortable from my perspective. Uh, again, headroom is here, and the one thing you'll notice is, you know, this comes a little closer to you. So in the back seat here, where in front of you it feels very open, in the front seat you've got this here. But again, that large glass panel is really an impressive area. And again, overall visibility, a lot of glass in front of you is very, very good. You feel like you're sitting a little taller than the Model 3, but let's go take a look at the Model 3 and see what see how it really uh, is there. All right, in the Model 3 now, the first thing you're going to notice is when you get into the car, you are sitting lower. It's a lower drop. So the hip height, the seat height is higher in the Model Y. That makes some sense for the style of vehicle it is, uh, but you do get lower. So not, is there, not only is there a little bit extra rear headroom, you're also creating a little lower spot or little rear headroom in the Model Y. You're also creating a little bit lower seat here in the Model 3. The feel is of a more sporty vehicle. So if you want that sports car kind of feel, again, this one's a little quicker to 60, uh, probably handles similarly, but a little bit better. Again, the weight on both these vehicles is all down low. So although the center of gravity is probably slightly higher in the Model Y, it's probably not as much as maybe something like a gasoline vehicle where that engine would also sit higher. All the majority of the weight is down low in both these cars. Again, same view out the, here, uh, windshield, does appear to be a little smaller uh, overall visibility is still pretty good in these cars um, so very similar again the seat feels the same I would say my legs feel like from the knee section here I feel like my legs are on an angle here where they're a little bit more square down from the knee uh, in the Model Y so again a little bit taller seating position for me personally at my height I like to sit a little taller with my legs a little bit more square but if you prefer a more sporty driving environment, I would say that the Model 3 probably gives you that over the Model Y. The next thing I wanna look at is the frunk space, the front trunk, the frunk. And uh, you can see that the body line is absolutely different here on the Model 3 than it is on the Model Y. Now it may look the same on camera, but there is absolutely more height up by the windshield there. It all comes down to the front there pretty well but you can see again if we look at just up from here to the windshield you do see more height than you would over in here so we're going to take a look at the fronts of both of these vehicles to see the differences there to see you know what you could fit uh, in each one and which one might be more practical for you or if it doesn't matter either way for you starting with the model 3 you can see that the front space is a little smaller than the Model Y, which we'll get to in a second here. So you can see it is all plastic line. This is a great space as well. When we were talking about that gym equipment, this is a great place to put your smelly gear as well. And also a little bit more dirty gear. Maybe you go to the hardware store, pick up a load of gravel, pick up a load of, uh, you know, things that might be a little dirtier, a little garden soil or something like that. You've got that plastic type area here, which is a place to me, you might be able to stick some stuff. Uh, now keep in mind, all Tesla vehicles have a little bit of space back there. That's both uh, components, it's also, so um, things like washer fluid, it's also crash safety. So it's not an entire frunk from the front, which makes it interesting because we were talking about that up in front of the wheel, there being some difference. Well, there is still a little bit more depth over here. So we'll do a teddy bear test here in a second, uh, but you do have more depth in here than you would in the Model 3. And that is, again, more in the Model Y. Let's do that teddy bear test. 
All right, teddy bear test in the Model 3. It's kind of sized perfectly for our little Jim Gilbert's teddy bear, who is our singing teddy bear. One thing that you'll notice a little different is the light in the Model 3 is a little bit off center. Uh, that's just, you know, to fit the latch there. And that's centered in the Model Y, which we'll go to right now with our teddy bear and take a look there. And again, that reason for its centering is they are different trunks. A lot of people think they might be the same trunks. And you can see there, much deeper area for our teddy bear and uh, you know a little bit more space here. So overall, not only is the Model Y larger inside, larger in the trunk, it is also larger in the front space. So that's just a brief overview of the Model Y and the Model 3, but the conversation doesn't have to end here. It's hard for me to know what you want to know about Tesla vehicles, electric vehicles in general, and here we have access to not just Tesla vehicles, but all kinds of electric vehicles and relatively new ones. And I've got, I actually own a, an electric vehicle myself. So let's continue the discussion. What do you want to know about these? Because again, one of the huge benefits of working here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals is we're going to consistently have electric vehicles here to go over, to go back to, to go through, and we can find the answers to your questions. So I want to thank Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals for giving me full access to their entire line of Teslas, probably one of the largest line of Tesla vehicles Certainly out east, uh, maybe in most of Canada, we're a very large uh, Tesla store here. Uh, these, both these vehicles are 22, uh, 2022 models. They're very, very, very low kilometers. So if you're looking to buy a Tesla anywhere in Canada, connect with us, see if we've got something for you, uh, and as well as other electric vehicles. And if you wanna reach out to our sales team or myself, there's a link in the description that'll uh, link you both back to our channel here and to our sales team here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals. So. If there's something you want to know, let us know in the comments and please do subscribe as we'll continue to, that, to grow that conversation and try to answer every question you have about electric vehicles moving forward. Thanks everybody for watching.